We'll just. <laughs> Welcome to the weasel, welcome to the weasel, whip out your dicks and shove them in your ass. Welcome to the weasel with Mike and and Jonah. No. We're going, dude. It's just, it's just hard out on these streets, you know? It's, it really is, like, trying to figure things out, especially something that you've done many a time before and, and then just it not working at all. You know, it's it tickles my nuts, but not in a good way, like a really negative way. Honestly, I, I feel like if we didn't have audio or video or lag issues, you know, it wouldn't really be our podcast. No. So if anything, we're keeping the spirit of the podcast alive through, uh, through the veins popping out of your neck. In yeah. in stress, dude. Uh, you know what's um, it's, it's just so everybody knows. Uh, I've got my entire kit here. I've got my computer. I've got my microphone. I've got the new microphones that we just got. I've got my webcam sitting on top of, and you know, I'll just show you because uh, it's amazing. I've got you can. my webcam sitting on top of a book on top of a cup on top of another book but the webcam itself is clipped to a can koozie which is i don't know i thought was pretty ingenuitive anyway um, yeah well uh so all that being said uh i'm on my phone right so right yeah pretty cool dude uh whatever the Thanks. show the show goes on and the show Honestly, it hasn't gone on very much for us of late. Um, no. Due to a few things. One, I got fucking married. And uh, you've been in the States now for like a month, something crazy. I think, yeah. you, have, I think you have another three weeks or a month. Um, and uh, as such, things happen and come up and get busy when you get married. Uh, especially when you're facilitating the wedding. Um mm. And we didn't do it. Um, and I, for, for a minute, dude, I, I was kind of beating myself up about it. Just in that, like, I like the consistency that we had. But oh. then I also realized, um, I actually heard an, another, uh, another guy talking about, like, running a podcast. And it's like, you have to, you have to give yourself permission to like make mistakes and be boring and fucking be rusty. And like, you know, my, like, yeah, this is like a, a really, a really cool passion project of mine. Uh, and or, or like our, our brain love child together. And, uh, I really enjoy it, but recognizing that like, you know, sometimes you got to get married and shit comes up. Um, and I don't feel bad. Uh, all of you that were sitting by your computers or your phones waiting for when's the next weasel going to come out. Um, mm. I don't feel bad. And I also wonder how many of you did that. Uh, cause I don't feel like it was a lot. I got two messages from people Whoa, being like, Hey man, two what messages asking what the fuck's going on. Um. Yeah, I just told them what was going on. It was pretty easy. We <laughs> haven't done any episodes. I've got a couple that I could post that I haven't because I uh, of who I am as a person. Listen, guys, I I gotta ask you all the question, and I know you can't answer it because you haven't heard it yet. And once you do, I won't be ready to get the answer because I'll have already asked the question, and it'll be many days. Okay, but riddle me this, all right? Now, if you had a decision to sit, say, in a hot camper with a bunch of computer equipment and listen back to yourself talk and then also cut little bits of it back and forth and in and out and put music, just, you know, sweating your cunt off, uh, listening to your dumb vo voice drone on and on, or you could take some floaties and some beer and you could go down to the river and float it for six hours. What would you do? What would you, which one would you pick? 
I think, well, I know which one I picked. I think I can <laughs> uh, represent the audience here in saying, no, bro, you're totally justified in your decision. Uh, I feel like we, we will be a bit rusty, a bit of that ring rust on us. But I'm... I've been working with this theory of trying, not theory, I, I didn't come up with it, it's not mine, but uh, detaching from the outcome. Hmm. So, like, if we approach this podcast with the goal of, I want this to be the best fucking podcast in the world, and, like, pay our bills all the day, and it's going to be the most fucking entertaining thing on the planet, mm. um, we're setting ourselves up for for stark failure um right. but if we approach but if we approach it from the concept of i'm just a podcaster and i'm doing what podcasters do regardless of any accolades or viewer count or whatever then right. just by doing the podcast like we are right now we're a success true well, I feel successful. <laughs> yeah, more than anything. yeah, dude. Me too. More, more than anything else in the world, dude. I, you know, that's that's what I see in the mirror. I reek of it. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's you know fucking... what I, mean? I I reek of that shit, son. <laughs> there ain't nobody that's more successful than this guy staring back at me, bro. In all my you... reflection of my own shades, dude. All you gotta <laughs> do. Is just lower the bar. That's all you got to do, man. Bar, dude. We didn't even put the bar up. Dude, the bar's it's on the floor. Sweet, dude. It's all Gucci, bro. <laughs> the bar's on the floor, We're there, dude. dude. We did it, bro. <laughs> Success. <laughs> Success, man. You know, if we knew, only knew so many years ago if it was that fucking easy, bro. Yeah. Ugh. But I, I get it, though. I do. I, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, and I, I just, it is funny. But um, I do, I really do feel like, uh, I do feel like a, a sense of success when we record this stuff. Not all the time. You know, no. sometimes it's like, dude, what the fuck? But like right now, you know, there's this like this, I can feel it. I can feel the, I can feel the, the success starting to uh -huh. come out of my Grease on my forehead, you know what I mean? Like, is is success a horn you grow from your forehead? It could be a fucking horn, dude. <laughs> maybe COVID wasn't given to give us a horn, and maybe the vaccine didn't give me a horn. But by God, bro, maybe my sheer just success will just fucking create this, bro, beautiful horn. What if it? Whoa. What if it really did work that way, and like we just went around? That, that is that is kind of what we do as a species right we we go around measuring people and how okay are they are they worth my time are they worth mm. um you know like when, let me figure out this person what what drives them what values do they have like are they happy um right. and it would be real fucking instead of playing you know the the game through conversation of trying to figure a person out you could just look at their fucking forehead and see how big their horn is dude yeah, big dude, big yeah. big horns out there. Got to you know, some people got big horns, some people got small horns, some people got no horn, um, and then and then you can it, it's it's much like measuring your dick, you know. Uh, I, I think that's the the, the phallic uh, metaphor is well, now coming back to penises, of course. But you know, of course, it couldn't be anything else. <laughs> but I'm I'm saying like I'm saying like like if you meet a guy and he just has a right. fucking solid horn on him, right? And you're just like, well, okay, wow, right. this guy this guy feels feels fulfilled in his life. He feels successful. Well, see, that's the thing is, is the measure of that man's horn, success horn, right? His success horn uh -huh. is the measure of that based off of how he feels about being successful or how legitimately successful in the thing he a is doing actually is like a, right? like, is because it, I know like, is a lot he of... objectively successful or right. uh... is he objectively successful at what he is doing or is he just so utterly confident in his success? Cause I know some people that ain't, 
and they're uh-huh. super confident about how smart they are, dude. I know some people, man. I, dude, I've met some people, bro. And you, you know what I mean? I've met some people, uh-huh. right? And, um, you know, they're, they're nice, sure. Not got a lot going on, whatever. And some of them not got a lot going on up here, which I can relate to. Um, mm-hmm. But, bro, they are the most confident motherfuckers I have ever met. I ain't never done wrong. I reckon they got a big old horn, dude. I I, I, I reckon. I, I think it has to be subjective. There can't be a fucking objective success horn. Right. It would have to be a subjective success horn because it's how how do you feel about yourself? And honestly, a subjective success horn. And honestly, that's what I think. That's what's more important. Like if someone if someone objectively if someone looks at you and they're like oh you don't have enough money in your bank account to, to be deemed mm. a success you don't have i don't know the right uh relationship or or number of friends in their eyes or drive the right car to be deemed a success then like but if you don't feel that way like if you are completely fulfilled and satisfied like satisfied with with your life and how you've lived it and what you've achieved and the goals that you've set for yourself, um, yeah. you know, like the 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 love in your life, you know, the amount of how you get to spend your time and freedom. Mm. Boy, probably got a big old success horn on him. Boy's got a big success, a subjective success horn. Yes, and it's yes, you're slanging. Dude. He's slinging a subjective success horn. Yes, S S H H. S S S H. Slinging subjective success horn. Slinging subjective success horn. Say that. S S S H. That's why we abbreviated it, man. Because saying that, you know, really fast, it kind of trips you up. Triple S H, baby. Triple S H. Let's make that a little bit shorter. Um, and you know, but see, that's actually pretty cool. Cause, um, you, you know, that, that kind of, that's the kind of people you want around you. You know, those are the kinds of people that you want around are the ones that feel like gratified by life, successful in life. Not necessarily cause they've got a lot of shit, but because, you know, they're confident and, and, you know, they see that. Although it, it is kind of a bummer because there are a lot of people out there that are the other way, right? Where they are really successful. They do a lot of stuff. And, um, but they never feel like, they never feel like they've done enough. They never feel confident. I, a lot of people call it like, um, what is it called? Uh, imposter syndrome, you know, where you feel mm-hmm. like you don't deserve what you've got, um, what you've done, uh, or accomplished. And so those people would have tiny horns, tiny man, horns on which them. is big bummer dude so then you gotta wonder dude how long right how long before they come out with horn enlarging medicines (laughs) immediately dude (laughs) immediately (laughs) that's the beauty of capitalism (laughs) you can't you can't even trust a man by his horn anymore no you know (laughs) no dude (laughs) back in my day we used to be able to gauge a man by the the girth of his horn. <laughs> Nowadays, you know, these these fucking kids don't know what it was like. Um, these kids don't even get how hard it was, you know. The only way your horn grew is when you felt accomplished. You know how hard it was to feel accomplished in the 70s? Oh, is That's the thing is, I'm not sure that's true, dude. Because, like, literally, I mean, if you go back to... Depending on the period of time in which you lived, like, success mm. was just being alive. Well, true. Yeah, yeah. You're just, f- fuck. Hey, I'm just, yeah. I'm just fucking happy to be here. There's so much shit that could have killed me if if I would have yeah, if I would have cut my leg and got like got a boo boo and got infected. I'm out. You know, so just living. You're like fuck no, yeah, kidding, yeah. I got a fucking I got a leaf cut the other day. I guess they didn't have paper back then. I this leaf cut me the other day, and you know, I was I didn't know if that was my time, but turns out I'm all good. Big old. Big old fucking success horn on them. <laughs> yeah, dude. They would have ginormous triple SHs just <laughs> hanging off their fucking heads, dude. Massive. Right. You know? And and then, like, so you think, like, all everything that was built 
would be built around these massive horns, right? People just got these big old success horns, so all the buildings accommodate, every, all mm-hmm. technology accommodates, right? But then, with the advent of modern society, yeah, people's horns start shrinking, yeah. right? People don't have as big as success horns anymore because there's more to worry about and, and you have to do more to be accomplished. There's like there's studies more. done on like, oh, yeah. b- success horns are down, are, are down 18%. You know this the, like, this time over the, the, compared to the last decade, like what's yeah. going on, what's going on? Is it social media? It, it, oh, oh my god! You know, uh, social media ruining our subjective success horns. I think so. First of all, I think that much has been has been figured out because because what are we kind of going back to what you just said? Like if you're constantly comparing, like if we're comparing our our podcast to the Joe Rogan experience. Like and like we're not we're like we're not a success until we're fucking on Joe Rogan's level. We're right. gonna be fucking a miserable failure. Right. You know? Um and the same thing happens with fucking Instagram, you know, when like these people are just looking at these people that are projecting their super successful lives and their hot bods and it's all right. bullshit on the back end, but uh, you know, honestly though, that would be better though, because because you couldn't hide how you felt about yourself. It'd be it'd be uh-huh. indicative to your horn. Mm. So like, yeah, you, you couldn't could s- pretend to be confident. No, no, dude, you would see these like influencers on like Instagram that like seem all successful, but yeah. that's a little horn bitch. They ain't got no horn, man. And you feel bad for him, you know. You're like, oh, look yeah. at you trying to project confidence, but we can wow. see, we can see that you we can don't tell actually feel that way inside. Yeah, yeah, we can tell by the signs of your puny, misshapen, half-assed mm-hmm. horn that this confidence that you exuberate is not even a figment of reality. It's, mm pitiful actually it's like, it's kind of sad you almost feel bad. you really do feel bad for those like man dude but it, it'd be dude it'd be yeah. better it'd be better for everybody else though to see it'd be like oh this person that i thought was like the top yeah. of the mountain of happiness and success and well-being and physical fitness is fucking no, miserable with themselves actually so yeah Maybe it's not attaining all those things that's going to make me happy and make my horn grow big. It's just right. finding acceptance within myself. And then you're, you you feel the growth a little bit. It just, like your horn blinks. I don't know. It blinks mm-hmm. a little. And you're like, oh. Like you, like you figure something out. You figure something Boom. out, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, oh, maybe, maybe the answer was inside the whole time. And, Whoa. <laughs> and your fucking horn shoots out uncontrollably <laughs> and you, you can't your neck can't support it anymore <laughs> it just you just fall breaking the screen <laughs> Dude, the right, day doesn't matter because you achieve like that's like that's like the society's enlightenment, isn't it? You get so enlightened and confident with yourself that your horn just gets dude. so big it snaps your neck off. No one tells you. Ascended. No one tells you about the dangers of big horns, man. Everybody's chasing them, but no one, no one, no one tells you. No, when you actually. No. It, achieve uh you know the the, the singularity or <laughs> you know <laughs> Singular, horn singularity <laughs> uh, horn vana dude okay you know, so someone starts getting like you know like like a little like uh what's the word uh like uh not humble uh you know and starts getting a bit of a bit of a big horn on them and you're like, careful, man, careful, man. You might, you might want to dial back that a bit. You might want to humble yourself. You're going to snap your fucking neck with that horn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And you know, dude, uh, like religions and stuff, 
yeah. any like fake medicine, like fake meds, like, Hey, you know, listen, like you take this and you'll feel more confident and you do this, you know, lead this like kind of lifestyle and you'll feel fulfilled. Right. Man. If they got small horns, dude, that shit ain't happening. It ain't real. I, I don't know about you, dude, but I don't know if I'm listening to any small horn bitches, you know? No. What? How could you? How I mean, could you listen to someone with how, that small You're gonna give horn? me. You're gonna give me advice, small horn man. I don't yeah. think so. Yo, my cousin's three year old's got a bigger horn than you, bro. What <laughs> the fuck is up, son? <laughs> you know, and all he does is play Fortnite, bro. Dude, how come his horn's so? No, dude, they would have big dude's horns. fucking pumped. Yeah, man. He's pumped, dude. And he's so ready to be alive, man. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, um, I like, the, I really do think that that concept, though, uh, has a lot of benefits to it. But it's interesting that most of those benefits are so that we can, like, further understand people as a whole rather than, like, you know, I don't know. Everybody's got a big cock hanging out of their hip. You know, like, that's that's just as cool, I reckon, but it serves a, no real purpose, right? Can you, you know, fuck it's with this a... hip cock? Sure, yeah, of course, yeah. Oh, well, then it serves a purpose, son. Yeah, it serves a purpose, it serves a <laughs> purpose, you know, like, but, yeah. You know, but, like, it, it, I find a lot of people that I've talked to lately are just looking for, they're just looking for some kind of, like, more human connection. You know? Yeah, and I think and think I think that's the conclusion I came to when I was in Denver and we didn't do the podcast because there was a point in time where I was like, man, I'm kind of bummed out, you know, we didn't do any of the podcast. But every time I thought that, I would be like, but we're just spending time together already. Anyway, we're just doing it. We're just we're just enjoying it. We're mm-hmm. just spending time together and enjoying it. There doesn't need to be uh, a bunch of wires in between us. Right. We've already got, we've got wires in between us now, mm-hmm. you know, we were going to do that all over again, but there was something about being able to just, I don't know, fucking touch you, dude. Dude, I I really enjoyed touching you. Yeah, I really enjoyed just, you know, touching your, just you touching it, you know? It's yeah, fucking, jerking off my it horn. It was odd, but it, it was good, dude. Oh, man, if you had a horn, You bro, gave me big horn. <laughs> well, that, that, that's yeah. That, I mean, that's something that I want to get into is just kind of like that whole that whole time and the wedding. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I wanted to ask you after you know being on your honeymoon and having time to reflect, you know, away from the hustle and bustle of life and and friends and family and all that. What did you think of that whole experience? Was there anything? Um, I thought. I thought it was really neat. Mm. Just fucking neato, dude. In in the sense of um like I feel kind of like how William said, uh William was my was my best man at my wedding. Um Mike and officiated, uh, and then I had William as my best man and he he gave a speech as best men do. And uh, part of his speech, I mean, for one, it got super emotional. Um, I think he he touched on, like, unconditional love and, uh, like, like how, how I've helped him on his journey. Really, really touching shit. Um, but one of the points that he mentioned was um, that me and him, me and him spend a lot of time a lot of time. We did it today. That was what I was doing before this podcast was I talked to William for four fucking hours about, uh, I mean, about, about our lives, our personal lives, you know, this situation's going on, this situation's professionally going on, a- advice back and forth, this or that. Um, yeah. And, and me and him do spend a lot of time doing it. And one of our reoccurring themes is, uh, what is success and how do you measure it? Um, right. And I think he, he correctly correlated the fact that like 
our wedding was such a fucking success, dude. Like, oh yeah, it was such a good time, dude. It was such good people around, like no dramas. Uh, just everybody was genuinely there. I, I don't want to say yeah. everybody, but you know, like there's some people I didn't know, but uh, for the most part, everybody was genuinely there that I cared about and um, that I I felt like I I really needed to be there and yeah. was just so happy for me and Janie and uh William I think correctly goes this is this is what fucking we've been talking about dude like this is success like look at like look at all these people that fucking care like deeply care about you and like want you to succeed uh like want you and Janie to you know like want to celebrate us essentially. Right. Um, so in that regard, dude, I, I, I think it was a fucking amazing wedding. Um, I forgot the question you asked, but whatever, dude, big horn, son, big horn, dude. Um, I thought, I thought it was a success as well. I really enjoyed getting to spend time with um, some of your friends from Jacksonville. I thought they were really cool. Um, it, dude, it was awesome getting to see Shane in person. Fuck, what a lovely dude. Fucking that dude's the good guy, man. He's the best of us, man. That guy. <laughs> yeah, what? I know it, dude. You know, I, he's I try so to tell good. people. <laughs> My God, dude. I can't tell and enough you know people. What? Like, you know, sometimes some people that are like that, you're like, man, I fucking hate that dude. He's so good. But you can't even say that about Shane. He's so good that you can't even say that about him at all. It's, no. He's just, you just want to fucking climb inside of him and let him hold you for a little bit, you know, just for comfort. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's bizarre, but he's the um, best. And he's he, he on he's on a previous episode of ours. If you scroll back like thirty episodes, uh, we had Shane yeah. on as a guest. Uh, worth worth yeah. a listen. Yeah, good listen. That was a good good episode. Um, <laughs> that was a funny episode. Uh, so, but I, I did I did a little bit of reflecting about it as well, um, and uh, I did want to apologize to you uh, for. Um, the day of the wedding, right? And like the lead up to it. Cause we were just hanging out and, uh -huh. um, I was not, I was not my normal self while we were there. You know, I was not, I was so nervous, man, dude, you were fucking so, stressed son. I was so nervous, dude, that like, I just couldn't, I was trying to, I was trying to be funny and fun and hang out. And I just couldn't do it, dude. I was so locked away up here man and i was so, i was just i was stressed the whole trip leading mm. up to it as well like after after that i was i, mean, I felt so good <laughs> i felt like i'd actually be on holiday i don't, I don't know why i think i was just so worried about i was you know i really didn't want to be the one to like bugger up your wedding you know uh -huh. that would have been shit and i never would have done that anyway but um you know although there were some questionable hemi jokes uh, in there, so <laughs> there was a there's a couple of questionable Hemi jokes. I, I I will say, dude, that you dude you fucking smashed it. Like you did you you did a fantastic job at the actual ceremony itself. Uh, mm. Did you stress me leading up to it? Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. fucking. I'm sorry. <laughs> you fucking. <laughs> you fucker, dude. <laughs> I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> oh man i'm so sorry dude i am like i know i wasn't helping out because you're already stressed anyway without having to worry about us motherfuckers you know you got william worrying about his speech you've got me worrying about the ceremony you've got my because for everybody, so everybody knows um the day of the wedding you were I still ready. he was still was not riding. done with the ceremony <laughs> I was riding. and i was like bro i fucking asked you to do this like a year and a half ago yeah. a year and, a half. <laughs> and you were you were still writing the morning of the ceremony like hours hours before the ceremony yeah, and I, yeah. Was like, I was like hey man i believe in you to get it done 
but what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> yeah, dude. Not good. I'm so, so sorry, dude. It was fucking bull. That's bullshit, right? That's fucking bullshit, dude. I'd be oh, fucking buddy. livid at myself. Bro, dude. I I, I, I love you to death, bro. Uh, and I... <laughs> It was so good, like like seeing you and you being here, uh, and and I knew that you were gonna that you were gonna smash it for sure. Yeah, you just needed a little help. Yeah. Well, I did. Um, I needed to see you guys. What do you mean? You know, I needed to see you. I needed to meet Janie, but I needed to see oh, you guys in sure. person. Like I tried, man, I really did work on it for like a year and a half, maybe not a year and a half, probably like eight months. I was fucking hooking into it real hard, but, um, I mean, I just, I had a hard time doing it, dude. I could not come up with things to say. I read others. I read other, th other ones. I read fucking, um, you know, I read the stuff that Janie sent me. I read, I read everything over and over again, dude. I could not, and then, and then I start fucking up the order of shit as well, mm -hmm. and then fucking that around, and and dude, I just I couldn't wrap my head around it. It was so fucking confusing for some reason. I don't know. And now that it's done, and I look at it, I'm like, You're like, oh, that was so simple. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Right? What well, the fuck was I doing, dude? Well, dude, you know? and it's dumb. And, and like, I will say that, uh, I wasn't really stressed, uh, you know, about the wedding up until like a couple days before really, which I feel like yeah. is pretty good. Oh yeah. Like most yeah, people, most people are stressed like from the moment they get engaged. Yeah. And like, <laughs> you just started getting stressed when your groomsmen arrived, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, oh, all right. Let me, let me f piece this fucking puzzle together. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I know that like, I probably could have, uh, um, I don't know, been a, been a bit more like patient or, or sensitive with you. And at some point I like, I, like, I just turned on like logistics mode and I was like, Hey man, I need you to get that fucking shit done. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want time to fuck around right now. I need you to get that shit done. I don't think you ever said that to me. No, but I, I said that internally to myself. Oh, like fucking, you need to fucking get this fucking. Shit yeah, fucking and then done. and then you went and then you went and party at Trish and Dave's the night before, and I was like, you fucking cunt, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you were like you were like dude i'm gonna uh you're because we were like oh it's still not sorted like we gotta get this shit done and then you're like i don't worry, dude i'm gonna go home and work on it tonight like no dramas no dramas and then i saw you at the meet and greet that we did the meet we did a meet and greet the day before our wedding and fucking mike and gets drunk and then our then our like pseudo aunt and uncle were like party at our house like the the night before the wedding uh, and then Mikey comes up to me and goes, yeah, I'm going to go to Trish and Dave's, dude. You should come. And I was like, you should be working on something. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I said in my head. But what I really said is, I was like, have a good time. Uh, uh, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> I'm going to kill you, Mike. If, if I could fit my fucking hands around that fat fucking neck, I would. But I know I can't. I know I can't, dude. Your veins are too fucking strong and would just rebuff my my hand pressure. You you would survive a strangulation for sure. <laughs> oh far out. Oh, I love you so much, dude. Yeah, you're right. I wouldn't you wouldn't be able to choke me out. <laughs> no, dude. No, no one can. <laughs> You have to have some massive hands to choke. They've tried. Yeah, they've tried. They can try. <laughs> My mom's been trying for years. Dude. I just I can't fucking put you down, man. Oh no, people have tried. Yeah, sometimes it's just because they don't feel like it. You know, it's not sympathy. It's like I don't know. I force you to care about me. It's disgusting, isn't it? You're like this dude's so fucking annoying. I just. Uh, I just want to squeeze him. I just want to squeeze him until he so pops. You know? I just want to <laughs> Something uh, snaps. No. Just, uh, um, yeah. Ooh, but, gross. dude, 
honestly, man, uh, like like the week you and you and Kirley came and stayed with us was fucking dope, man. I I, I really I really enjoyed getting to meet Kirley and get to know her better. Mm. And obviously, it was fucking amazing to get to see you and touch you in person. Uh, I I I feel like I kept doing that. It, it, like you kind of mentioned it earlier, but mm. like I literally kept like just grabbing your shoulder. And hold yeah. and holding you for a moment, and you're like, "What?" And yeah. I'm like, "Just let me have this." <laughs> just soaking, just soaking you in. Dude. I'm you. I'm actively savoring you. <laughs> <laughs> actively savoring. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, that's interesting. That's an interesting concept. Actively savoring somebody, taking the moment to legitimately just. Yeah. Wow, uh, weird. Yeah. We got to do a lot of that. It was good. It yeah. was fun. I'm really glad you got to meet Carolee. She's she really enjoyed getting to meet you guys. Yeah. Um, she had a really good time, so yeah. Fuck em. She was uh <laughs> she was like, um uh what did she say? She was like, Oh, you know, it's 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 so weird. I'm always worried that like, you know, what if what if your friends don't like me? I'm like I've never been worried about that, you know? I'd never be worried about, you know, them not liking you. Mm-hmm. And she was like, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. That would be really hard to have to choose between your wife and your friends. And I'm like, fuck. And he's like, I don't want to. <laughs> but if you make me. <laughs> make me. Uh, <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, yeah, no, I'd never no, have you, to, you, babe, I'd 100%. You. 100% yeah, you. of course I choose you. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, nah, I, I was nah. never, I was never worried about that, but you know, <laughs> nah, you know, it came, it came down to it. We all, we all know. What <laughs> <you did>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no um but it was funny i was just like that's i've never i never was worried that you know you guys wouldn't get on um i think she was more worried than anybody else was to be honest with you she's she's but she's like that so i mean i i, um, I think it is a i think it is a bit of pressure you know and like I, yeah. Jan, janie felt the same way uh like maybe not as um i don't know uh um obtuse that's the wrong word mm-hmm. but uh like sh- she definitely had like an inkling of that as what like like oh like i really hope like me and mike can get along well considering mm. you know he's your best fucking friend in the whole fucking world so like no pressure but uh he yeah. better like me <laughs> yeah, <but. laughs> or i hope he likes me um yeah. jenny had a bit of that as well um I did. I did want to ask you as far as the actual uh, like ceremony itself. Uh, mm. How did it feel for you to kind of uh, like be the be the master of ceremony? You know, you, you're kind of in the moment with a lot of responsibility, and like you, you're 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 like a, a a vibe architect in the moment. You yeah. Know? Like, albeit brief, and it was already a happy occasion. But uh, you still, yeah. you know, the, the maestro. Well, the th- the thing is, right, like, you're right, it's already starting on a high note, you know, but that almost makes it more difficult, right, because if everybody's depressed and sad, it's easy to cheer them up, right, but what? if they're happy, and I bring it down, <laughs> say I fuck it up, and I bring the happy moment way down, that's pretty drastic, you know, <laughs> I would just be like, hey, what the fuck are you doing, bro? <laughs> yeah, stop. Okay? Just, just say the I do so we can get the fuck out of here, man. Oh, dude. Can you imagine? Dude? Nah, nah. nah. Um, it was weird. It was super weird. I was super stressed out. Um, well, and, and most of the people then, that you're looking out on into the crowd are complete strangers to you, yeah? No idea, dude. I had a few people that I recognized, and they're just like looking at me like, we expect good things from you, stickhead. <laughs> good things from you, stickhead. Yes, good. You know? For sure. Good, stickhead. Good. You know? For, for reference, uh, at, at our buddy Cody's wedding, Cody was one of my groomsmen. Uh, Mike, and this is in the middle of COVID, so he wasn't able to attend. 
So what they did instead was glue his fucking face to a post. And we carried that down the aisle with us <laughs> to represent Mike and uh, AKA Stickhead. Stickhead Mike. Um, so I guess that was a little bit of extra pressure too. But, you know, I don't know. It was, it was I think the, the once I got up there <clears throat> and then screamed into the microphone the first time <laughs> I said anything. <laughs> right and i was like oh fucking shit and then like oh <laughs> you know <laughs> after i did that and everybody's like Pfft. i'm like oh, easy, dude i got this in the bag no worries yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and it was it was good because it wasn't so it wasn't so drastically like oh god you know and, um i think it helped that the the vibe of the wedding because because you guys are just so fun you and jane are just so incredibly fun and fun people who do fun things with other fun people right mm-hmm and so that that was the vibe. Whether people are fun or not, they're gonna show up and they're gonna give that vibe, lest they be fucking I don't know, funned out of the place. Who knows? I mean, I don't you, know. You can't I mean. be funned out when attending a wedding. Like, come come no. on, bitch, you're here to have fun. Yeah, you go have fun. Quit being so not fun. Just go have fun. You know, and most people do. So yes, um, that was cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I. It felt nice to be able to be be that for you guys, and it felt good to it felt good to do well, and 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 everybody said I did really well, which made me feel nice. It also made me feel really worried after a little while because so many people kept telling me I did a good job yeah, that I thought they were all lying, lying to me. Yeah, they're all like, like "Oh he, shit, he fucking bombed." Oh, shit. He he did really bad. We better go. You know, like, <laughs> he oh, needs hey, some he extra. did great. You uh-huh. know, good job, buddy. Yo, little buddy, good good work up there. What a fucking retard. <laughs> you know, <dude. laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. But I don't think that was the case, and I would hope not. I mean, you would no. tell me. I, that, that, that's why I love you so much. I would have told you, you would, for sure. I would have roasted yeah. you about it already. Oh, yeah. 100%, dude. Um, and so that, that gives me a little bit of confidence, you know. But it doesn't stop the... It, you know, like I still had that like inner chatter in the back of my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, you, you, you know what? You, just, you didn't do that. You couldn't have done that good. They're just fucking making you feel good about yourself. Mm-hmm. So your horn gets bigger. Mm-hmm. You're a spectacle. And you're a spectacle. Oh, like, God damn it! My horn shrinks. <laughs> I was telling Curly uh, something. We were talking about um, uh, attention, right? Because I was like, in reality, I am quite shy. I am, I am quite shy. I know that sounds just stupid coming out of my fucking big mouth that I'm shy, right? I know it does. You, uh, but because um, she was asking why I don't like my birthday. I just don't. I don't like it when the attention's on me like that. I don't like a day where it's all mine. I hate it. It makes me feel gross. I don't know. And I was like, I really only like the attention when I'm taking it from somebody else. <laughs> you know i love other people's birthdays because then i go up and i make a spectacle of myself and fucking is and that away. is that Isn't the that is is was that the the energy you were channeling at my wedding to be like you know what this is their moment I gotta make it about me brah i'm making it about myself <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. well um well no but that it, it kind of pertains right because um something that's different doing weddings and stuff like that versus other things, other public speaking and stuff. And it's something I've talked to you about before is when you're doing public speaking for a wedding, you're not the center of attention, right? You are not bringing the center of the the attention to yourself. You're trying to project as many people's attention on the two people in front of you. And that's why that was part of the reason I had such a hard time writing it. But that and that was one of the things that's really difficult is the inflection in your voice has to change. It has to be directed towards people, you know, and, and rather mm-hmm. than like trying to draw people's attention in. You're trying to direct it somewhere else. I found that really challenging. But once I did it, now I, I get it. Like I, I mm-hmm. kind of understand how it works and how it feels like doing it for the first time. And I now know how it feels. Right. Uh, it, that is just really powerful that that ability to do that and I, I reckon it's not you don't get it every time I reckon sometimes you just flop but like that like just it felt so interesting to be able to 
to pull everybody's eyes in with my voice and direct it at you two beautiful mm. stunning people there you know yeah. the sun is beating down it's hot it's, people are starting to sweat you know it's a little bit windy that stupid um dude with the ball cart got everybody pissed off you know and fucking yeah uh and you know whatever and but no, no, no. We've got these two people here that are fucking making this like commitment, legal commitment in front of all these fantastic, strange people and strangers. Uh, you know, let's fucking let's suck them all in. And it was just really fun. I had a lot of fun doing it. So yeah, um, yeah. I didn't honestly like I like. I wish I would have looked out at the audience more. Mm-mm. I you were you were looking exactly where you needed to look, bro. <laughs> Uh, whatever because you miss my, my wife is so beautiful no i'm serious whatever. dude that like because well you but see the thing is you didn't look out at the crowd did you you were sucked into her face weren't you yeah. looking at her eyes like wow this is really oh uncomfortable up here i don't like standing up here in front of all these people no honestly i don't mind i didn't mind it at all uh i wasn't even i mean i wasn't even nervous really um i wonder if if there's a bit of like doing the podcast has helped us Mm. as far as we we understand enough about public speaking albeit you know not actively um to know that like hey you can't fucking say an inside joke you can't fucking um you know, like, you have to speak clearly and articulately. Like, you can't you really drag on a sentence that doesn't make sense, you know. Because, uh, like, we know at least how to speak to an audience. Right. With practice. Um, yeah. So, like, I, I mean, and, like, I and honestly, like, I knew most of the people in attendance. So, it was, like you know whatever mm-hmm. they're these are all these are all my homies that have showed yeah. up to support me honestly i could i could like go up there and like suck and like stutter or whatever and they wouldn't care, care. yeah they, no. like they're all they're all everyone that we invited was like there to support us so mm-hmm. um yeah i mean it, it, it is it is it, it, i mean it was like quick like it did yeah. go by in a flash um, as far as the actual ceremony and the wedding itself, but the mm. this ceremony particularly just in, uh, um, like I, d- I don't remember having a moment to like scan the crowd and be like, hello, 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 you, hello, you, hello, hello, hello. Okay. I see you. Yep. Eye contact. Like there was like, like I couldn't do that. And that was how I naturally wanted to like host, I guess. Um, I don't know. That was, that was my like weird part of the ceremony was that like, I didn't have time to like scan the room. Like I just had to, Oh shit. I'm standing up here. Everybody else is coming up here. Mikeen's up here. Oh shit. Janie's coming. And I didn't really have a moment to like pick people out in the crowd or anything. Um, but yeah, no, dude, smashing success. I think, I think you fucking nailed it, buddy. Honestly. Um, and I'm happy that you did it. I really am. No, thank you. Thank you for giving me that opportunity, dude. It was, it was one I'll never forget. That's for sure. Mm. Um, yeah. And in fact, I've even thought about, you know, like maybe just doing it on the side you know as as like just for some extra cash you know because it was so much fun it was just a good time i mean turns out you i don't know if you caught this from our wedding planner Mm. but you don't actually need to be ordained in colorado to marry people no didn't know that no didn't know that till the day of my wedding and i and i've i've married people in colorado (laughs) (laughs) And I did not know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, 
So <laughs> uh, Colorado's weird. It's there's laws are written by dogs apparently. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or some yeah. shit like that. I don't yeah, they they dog. said that like your dog can be. Some people think that your dog can be your witness. I I think that was the case for a minute, and they they changed it back. Like you can't have a dog, but you also don't need a witness. You don't even need a witness, right? No, no. <laughs> so literally, your dog probably could be. Literally, you and your fiance can go in the woods alone and get married right you don't need anybody else there you don't need a witness you don't need a dog you can just wander into wherever the fuck you want to go to have your little seance uh and charge your rocks and get married Mm. well see i would do those types of weddings too I, dude, you'd be dude, you'd be a great shaman like, I know. wedding guy, you know? I know, I would. I would be an awesome shaman wedding guy. I I, I and I think that's the angle I would go for too. I would be the Hey man, listen, I'll do your conservative wedding or whatever it is you don't want. But have you thought about these non conventional wedding ideas? <laughs> Perhaps a string of moonstones draped across your shoulders by a dwarf. You have like a tapestry uh, made into a robe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> with a hood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on, and I come out with one of those uh, swinging incense burners. Woof, woof, <laughs> and I go out, and then I just smash it on the ground and start a little forest fire that I fucking put out by just pissing on it. Uh huh. You know, as all then, as all great wood ceremonies start, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent stuff. And then, uh, and then I guess I put tree sap on each of their tips of their noses, as a signifying of like the strength of the great oak, even though it's probably pine pitch. But they don't uh-huh. even know that the great strength of the oak trees. <laughs> and then you touch their noses together, and they can't separate. <laughs> It rips off some skin when they disconnect. Actually, we, we rip off both of them. So we take skin from both and we put it in a uh, in a pine cone. And then we plant that pine cone behind their house. And yeah, after this you, tree after, that bursts uh, forth. You're forgetting it. You have to it drizzle it with blood from, you know. Both of them and a puppy, but well, that's ex- that's expected. I didn't think I had to explain that to you, but you're right. This is a podcast, so people don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. You're right. Yes, you need hand blood from you and her and a puppy, and it can't be your puppy. It has to be your great niece's puppy. And if you don't have a great niece, you have to go find somebody's great niece, adopt them as your great niece, uh-huh. and then get their puppy's blood. To use as right. part of the sacrifice, yeah. Like, like you don't, specific. you don't need all the puppy blood, but you do need enough to qu- question the whether the puppy's yeah, alive yeah. or not. Uh, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's like if they survive, great, but like not necessary for the ritual. Yeah, it's it's not a set amount either. It's like whatever amount of blood for that particular puppy is required to bring it to the brink of death. Uh-huh. That's. I mean, that's just what the ceremony calls for. I'm not, I'm not fucking making the rules. Mm-hmm. Here. You're not writing the, the textbook, dude. Right. You know, I'm not writing these fucking manuscripts in sand and turning them into glass by lightning. All right. That's just, that's somebody else. I'm just relaying the information to you as the shaman, uh, <laughs> right. really, dude, you know, the shaman marriage guy, Fuck, whatever that man. dude is called. Fuck man. <laughs> dude, what dude, you got to get your great, you're getting married soon. You're like, fuck. I need to. I need to. Do my great niece. <laughs> my great niece. Is a fucking dog, man. <laughs> but her fucking mom's being a bitch about it. <laughs> I'm. I'm just trying to get married, man. You know. <laughs> Wrench in my works like this. Uh, what the ah. fuck, man? Damn. Bitch, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a whole new layer of like premarital stress, you know? Oh, dude. Yeah. You, man, Wiccans must have it fucking rough, dude. All these spells and shit they gotta figure out for getting all their ceremonies sorted out. That's wild. It, you're Absolutely you're in it, wild. bro. That, that's your business, son. Well, I think uh, I think I can fake it till I make it at least. <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, man. And I wonder, like, like, see if I can if I can get into like the the Wiccan world, right? But like, leading up to it, it's easy, right? That's that's the easy part, right? Because the people I'm going to be dealing with are just getting into the Wiccan stuff as well. So I can make up a certain number of these ceremonies off the top of my head, mm -hmm. and they'll they'll think it's real, right? Huge success. Um, my one big big horn. <laughs> okay, a big massive horn, huge success. <laughs> right but then <laughs> once i get my foot in the door all right then i'm gonna have to start looking into some serious fucking occult stuff you yeah know? yeah no you're you're and... you're approached by malachi the warlock and he <laughs> and he's like hey man i got a got a big got a big ask you know, yeah. you, you haven't been in the community very long but like I've, I've heard a lot about your your ceremonies and i think i think you're the guy to do it yeah and you got you gotta you gotta grit your teeth and grab a puppy dude yeah oh dude that's easy man that's easy bro puppies no puppies worries, the dude. easy part yeah puppies no. monkeys even dude you know mammals of any kind fucking mm -hmm. small small animals fucking dead dude no worries i'll sacrifice them cunts i'll drink blood straight from their necks dude yeah. whatever all good yeah all right make sure your veins it's bigger the, it's, yeah, it does. Like I just I, I absorb their strength, right? Like, you uh -huh. know. Some people they'll 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 do the blood of the puppy until it's almost on the brink of the death. And then they'll give it like CPR, you know, to bring it back to life. Yeah. Because that's just what what fucking pussies do. Okay? Yeah. Not me, dude. <laughs> Not, you. Not me. I'm drinking the remaining blood straight from its neck hole. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, dude. And you... then absorbing its energy and then transferring it into the essence of the marriage that I'm performing. Like right? a respectable what, shaman would. Uh, like a real shaman's supposed to do. You know? I'm just imagining you like, uh, like, you know, how they kill chickens. They just like grab it by the head and just like do like and a quick little <laughs> shit whip. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm picturing but like a but like a like a like a do like a i don't know like a big floppy eared puppy yeah <laughs> blood sprays on the audience members and everybody just <laughs> just eyes open mouths gape just... <laughs> accepting you yeah do you think those are bad, right? You should hear about my child baptisms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's Yeah, those are real those are real cookies, dude. Yeah, uh, what happens? I'm gonna I'm gonna walk down to have a smoke and I'm gonna take you with me because it's on the phone. I just realized I can do that because I'm on the phone. And I'm not sure where my uncle is. I think he's in his shed. So What shed? Know. They just destroyed the shed. Oh, they've got more shed, dude. Oh, There's nice. Heat shed. Uh, with, There's well, so much shit, buddy. Let's uh, let let's cut it there, and then we'll pick it up on the brochie, eh? Um, we can do, yeah. Did you want to do that? Yeah. I don't. I don't even know what time we're at. Right about an hour. Fifty-seven minutes. Okay. Cool. Um, sweet. All right. Well, uh, you know what? Hey, everybody, thank you for mm. uh, joining us on this beautiful, blessed day uh, that is Sunday in the United States of America freedom of that place that it is um cheers guys cheers thank you for going again after all this time and thank you dude for uh coming back with me once more on this gravy train balls are rolling thanks dude i'll see you i'll see you momentarily i love you to death goodbye i love you dude goodbye